Well, it's Monday again. Happy Monday to you. I uh, hope you had a wonderful, wonderful weekend and enjoyed the nice fall weather we've been having. We finished our module one, our unit one in ELA last week in our reading books, and we're ready to start number two. Remember, number one was like, what makes us who we are? And the story of us is what it was called. This one's more about our senses, our eyes, our nose, our ears, our mouth, our fingers. So we're going to we're going to uh, talk about our senses today. Look at this quote. All our knowledge begins with the senses. Hmm. You learn a lot with your senses, don't you? Like you've learned that the color of this grass is what? Green. At some point, maybe kindergarten, maybe probably before then, you recognize this color as green and so you can call it green and this color is red and maybe some orange in there you learn those with your senses your sight um, look at this girl she's looks a little intimidated with a little lizard crawling on her her senses a bit are wide awake she may feel with her fingers the bumpy skin on that lizard i wonder if it smells i wonder if she can smell anything it's pretty close to her nose well, we're going to talk about our senses today. Let's go to the next screen here. And we're going to watch this little video together. Our essential question for this unit is, how do people and animals use their senses to navigate the world? How do people and animals use their senses to navigate the world? I'm going to shrink myself a little bit and we're going to watch a video that's going to help us answer that question. So pay attention right here. Many animals have super senses that far surpass our human perception. For example, an eagle's vision is up to eight times stronger than ours, which means it can distinguish small animals almost two miles away. If you have the eyes of an eagle, you can see an ant from ten stories up. But, like many birds, Eagles don't have a great sense of smell. Elephants, on the other hand, can detect the aroma of water sources up to 12 miles away. That's because they have more olfactory or smell receptors than any other animal. Elephant trunks are also very tactile. Elephants use their powerful and flexible trunks to touch, explore, and eat. Do you know that elephant feet are so sensitive they can feel distant earthquakes and seek shelter? Butterflies taste the world through their feet. This helps them avoid eating poisonous plants. Even though dolphins don't have external ears, just these small holes behind their eyes, they have an incredible sense of hearing. In fact, Dolphins also hear with their teeth by using echolocation. The dolphin emits very high frequency sounds that bounce off of objects like fish. And then the dolphin's teeth detect the returning sound and pass it to the brain through the lower jaw. What super sense would you want to have and why? So what super sense would you like to have? Which one of those five senses do you wish was super? I don't think it's smell because there's some things I don't want to smell. Um, taste, maybe. I don't know. Maybe things would taste weird if it was super. I guess I'm about to have to have some glasses. So I wish my sight was better. So I guess I'd have to have super sight. What about you? Which would be your favorite to get a soup? Which sense would you want to have superized? Well, let's talk about some words about senses. It says the words in the chart will help you talk and write about the selections in, the, in this module. Which words about senses have you seen before and which ones are new to you? So this first word is perception. Perception. And it means your perception of something 
is how you notice or experience it using your senses. So the kind of using all your senses to get your first thought on something, how you perceive something. You would use all your senses to come up with how you feel it or how you experience it. A sentence with using that word perception would be the amount of light in a room affects our perception of the objects in it. So the objects looks diff look, might look different or maybe even different color if there was different amounts of light in the room. The second word here is aroma. Have you heard of that word? An aroma is a strong, pleasant smell. So it's a smell. The aroma of freshly baked cookies filled the kitchen. That sounds awfully good. This third word, it's funny looking, isn't it? Can we sound it out? What would the first four letters make? D-I-S-T. Dist. I-N-G. Ing. Distinguish. <laughs> Distinguish is that word. Distinguish. If you notice how things are different, you can distinguish them from one another. That means that you can tell how they are different. I can distinguish the two puppies from one another because only one has a white spot on his chest. When I was in high school, I had two friends named Brad and Brian. If you know um, Eric and Adam Basket in fifth grade, their dad is who I'm talking about, Brad Basket. And Brad and Brian were twins. And they were both really good friends of mine, but I could distinguish them from one another, even though they looked pretty much just alike because I spent enough time around them. I knew little things about them that I could tell that I knew which one was which. Do you have friends that are twins and can you tell them apart? Can you distinguish one from the other? The fourth word here is tactile or tactile. Something that is tactile or tactile is experienced through the sense of touch. Tactile means using your hands. Touch. Petting a dog is a tactile experience. Okay, so you'll need to use know these words. You're not going to be tested on them, but understanding what they mean will help you in these stories we'll be reading over the next three weeks. Perception, aroma, distinguish, and tactile. All right, so let's think about a, our five senses and just think with me. What is something you like to hear? Hmm. If you want to draw it in your book, you could draw a little bubble off the hearing uh, in your book there, that, that page. I'm not sure what the page this is in your book. I don't have mine open. I'm just using the, the uh, uh, computer program. I like to hear music. Every morning, I like to turn on some soft, relaxing music and I'm waking up. It helps me stay calm and gets my day started in a pleasant way touch? What do you like to touch? How do you like, you know, I like to feel the soft grass under my feet in the springtime when it just has turned really green and you walk on it and it feels nice and cool and soft. Taste, oh, I like to taste lots of things. I like tacos. Do you like tacos? I guess my favorite thing to taste are probably barbecue ribs, I think. Smell? Mm -hmm. Some things smell really good. Some things smell really bad, don't they? I like to smell flowers. Sight. What do you like to see? We all like to see different things. I like to see my family with my eyes. That makes me happy. We use all of our five senses in different ways, don't we? We have all of these senses. Some people don't, do they? Have you ever met a person who does not have the sense of sight, what do we call that kind of person? We would say they're blind. I have a friend named Randy who is blind. He doesn't have the sense of sight, but it doesn't bother him. He's always happy. Have you ever met anybody who couldn't hear? I don't know anybody who can't hear, but I know there are people who are, what's the word for somebody who can't hear? They're deaf. You might see them speaking in sign language. So they don't have the sense of hearing. Touch, I, I'm sure there are people who maybe have some problems with their spinal cord because our touch comes from our spinal cord. We can feel things. And when we can't feel things, it means we're paralyzed. Taste. 
<laughs> I don't know anybody that can't taste things. Sometimes when we get a really bad cold, your sense of taste gets weaker, doesn't it? And smell, sometimes when we get a stuffy nose, we can't smell things. Let's talk about these for a minute. I'm going to shrink myself out of the way again. <laughs> okay. What are the five senses? Human beings have five senses. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so we can see the words at the... Oh, I need to really shrink this, don't I? We'll look at the bottom part in a minute. Human beings have five senses. Sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. That helps us form a perception, there's that word, of our surroundings. Our senses allow us to enjoy our world, learn more about it, and even protect ourselves. When we see, hear, taste, smell, or touch something, information travels to our brains to tell us what's going on. So let's talk about each of these sen senses. Hearing. We have an outer ear and an inner ear. Did you know that? Look at the picture here. The outer ear is the part that you can see, but inside is the inner ear. Hmm, let's read about it. The outer ear acts like a cup to catch sounds as they move past us. If you cup your hand behind your ear and then talk, you can hear yourself talking really loud. Our ears are like cups that catch sound. Boy, if you put both of them behind your ears, you hear and talk, you sound really loud. Sounds enter the inner ear through a spiral-shaped tube called the cochlea. The auditory nerve sends the sounds as information to the brain. The brain uses this information to tell us how far away sounds are and where they're coming from. So the sound comes from outside of our ear or the outer ear. It travels into the cochlea, this spirally thing, and then it sends it the auditory nerve up to your brain so you can know what you're hearing and how far away it is. Hearing is important, isn't it? Touch. The sense of touch is experienced through the whole body. When we come into contact with something, nerve ending in our nerve endings in our skin called send. Let me say that sentence again. Mr. Hilton couldn't read that sentence well. When we come into contact with something, nerve endings in our skin send tactile information to the brain. Remember that tactile means touch. We can detect four different sensations through touch. We can tell if something's cold. If it's, we can feel cold, heat, contact, which means you just touch something and you can see how it feels. Sometimes you feel pain, don't you? Put your hand down on a hot stove or touch something that's sharp. Sometimes you feel pain. Let's look at our skin. Did you know you could you could trick your little brother or little sister, even trick your parents? You could say, ooh, mom, you've got epidermis all over you. <laughs> well, we all do because epidermis is a fancy word for skin. So here's our layers of skin. Our epidermis is the top layer. The dermis is the bottom layer. It's got the little roots of our hairs that grow out. Our nerves, that's what causes the thing, it causes you to be able to feel things. There's the hair, of course. So touch is an important sense. How about smell? Look at this word, olfactory, olfactory nerves. Let's see what they are. The olfactory nerve in your nose delivers messages about smells or aromas, that's pleasant smells to the brain. We can detect and distinguish, tell the difference, among seven different aromas. Camphor, musk, flower, mint, ether, acrid, and putrid. I've not heard of a lot of those words, have you? I never thought about the things I smell being described as that. I would call them sweet. Maybe that was what flour is. Um, mint. Well, how would we describe mint? Kind of like pepper and peppermint. I don't know. But these words right here are different than what I'm used to hearing about smelling things or that I'm used to using. 
So here's the aroma. So we, there's something, particles in the air that makes it smell a certain way. We breathe in our navel, nasal cavity. And on right here, we've got the olfactory nerve, which distinguishes what kind of smell it is. And it sends a signal to our brain. Our brain is important in all of these senses, isn't it? We get lots of signals sent to it. Sight. Our eyeballs have a lens at the front of a retina and the back. The lens focuses images onto the retina. The optic nerve sends those images as pieces of information to the brain. And the brain creates a three-dimensional image that helps to tell us how close we are to objects around us. So here's a side view of your eyeball. You've got a lens, the retina, and the optic nerve. And that light comes in. The lens reflects it to the optic nerve. The optic nerve sends it to the brain. And then you got to stick your tongue out for taste. <laughs> taste. Our tongues are covered with tiny bumps called taste buds. I knew that, didn't you? Scientific word is papillae. Papillae. Can you say that? Stick out your papillae. All those taste buds. When we taste something, the papillae send information to the brain to identify the flavor. Taste buds detect four different flavors. Sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Everything you taste includes one or more of these flavors. What's your favorite thing? Do you like eating sour stuff or sweet stuff better? So, that's an introduction to this unit that we'll be working on for the next three weeks. It's more of a unit that's not so much about fictional stories. We're going to read a story tomorrow called The Science Behind Sight. And most of the stories in this unit are informational texts, like the one we just read. They give real life facts about um, things that you and I deal with every day. So these facts... These are the type of things we'll be reading this, this three weeks. It's informational. It gives us information about different topics. And every story we read will have to do with our senses, our senses. So now I want you to imagine something with me. We're not going to read a story right now. You're going to listen to one. What do you like to smell and taste? You know, one of the things that I really love to taste, I try not to eat them too much because they're pretty fattening, is a donut. You like donuts, chocolate glazed or jelly filled or powdered. You like donuts. You walk into Dunkin' Donuts, there's Krispy Kreme and you can smell those donuts. Boy, then you can taste them and they are so good. What if... A donut <laughs> had five senses too. Wouldn't that be crazy? What if a donut could hear and touch and smell and see and taste itself? Well, it might be named Arnie. <laughs> what are you talking about, Mr. Hilton? Well, there's a great story that I want you to listen to about a donut who gets five senses. It's called Arnie the Donut. Now, do you remember what we call it when we give something that's not alive the ability to do things that humans can do? It's called personification. You're giving them the characteristics of a person. This donut can talk, too. So I want you to listen to this next story, Arnie the Donut, and then go on to the next slide, and we'll work on our spelling and our um, short O and long O sound for this week. But enjoy Arnie the Donut right now. <laughs> 